with confidence, having the confidence to be a leader. Well, I'm excited. Our next speaker is somebody who really excels in the training of instilling confidence. So please welcome to the stage superstar diamond coach Vito Lafada. change is going on out there. There's so much change in what's happening in social media. I mean, it's getting freaky deaky out there, and people are just like, the guys are just like, selfie sticks, I don't even know what that is, it's freaking them out. You got markets changing, the economy's changing, this business is changing, and we as people are all changing. And a lot comes with that change where it hacks at your confidence. Change can start to make you feel uncertain, doubtful, fearful. And what, what you used to feel that you had your feet underneath you on solid ground, all of a sudden starts to feel like I'm on shaky ground now. And that feeling of going from I was confident to now I'm uncertain can really start to mess with your head and start having you feel uneasy. And I learned this one of the like hardest ways of my life when about like five and a half years ago, it was the first time I ever stood on a stage. It was my birthday, 2010. I got my very first speaking gig to speak at this summit, fitness business summit. I remember I was just, hey, this is important for where I want to go in my life, so I'm going to jump at this thing. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just going to take this thing. So I remember I, I took that gig and I get on with a mentor and I'm like, hey, um, just accepted this thing to speak to about 500 people. I have no idea what I'm doing. And he was like, okay, that's all right. I'll tell you what you gotta do. Here's how you present some content. Here's how you put this together. And he's like, now go practice that. And I was like, all right, cool. That day comes, and I remember I had some friends in the audience. I remember like Trina was there, like thumbs up in the front audience, like, yeah, go for it. And I was just like, Pearl Jam, come, Pearl Jam comes on. I'm like, yeah, everything's ready to go. I hit the stage, and everything goes as I begin to tell an entire presentation just doing this, back and forth. And I can remember the video guy in the back, like, it's a, audible gasp as he goes, oh, God. <laughs> and it was the most nauseating experience. I still watch the video every now and then to be like, I remember what that was as to where I am today. And I remember, I don't ever want to feel that way again. I want to start figuring out how I don't just feel or say I'm confident. So my mentor actually was like, how did you think that was? I was like, I thought I was confident. And he was just like, how about you don't just say it, but you be it. And I was like, there's a very subtle difference between just momentarily being confident and knowing how to live confident. And I began just studying to be like, well, what are all the patterns of living confident? And then I just put it together into this little framework that I want you guys to be able to have and go share with your teams or apply to yourself. And I call it the confidence ladder. I figure everything in Beach Body is going to the ladder. Why not add another ladder for you? So this is what you guys have it. But we got three basic steps that fall into this ladder. First, we have to be able to build it. Let's do away with the whole fake it till you make it thing. I don't, I've never been really too copacetic with that whole statement. I'm like, how about we okay, be okay with earning it and just know what it takes to build that instead of trying to fake it till we make it? Because there's integrity in build, doing the honest work to earn it. Then we have to be able to sustain it because we can be in moments confident. And then having that ripped away from you, that's what paralyzes us. That's what freezes us in our traps. So we just gotta be able to say, those peaks and valleys of life gotta go away. We wanna start being able to say, you have the ability and the power and the skill to create heightened and sustained levels of whatever you want, confidence. Because every time you're in a peak in a valley, that valley is robbing you of momentum. And momentum is where the movement is waiting. That's where your most success is waiting. So we got to explain, what are some things that we could place so that we can always sustain anything that we want to generate? And then how do we go out and teach it? Because it's good if we have it, but this is a network we have to be able to share it with our people. And I remember when I heard Robin Sharma say the greatest competitive advantage you can have in any market is to build leaders faster than anyone else. I say amen but let's build confident leaders. So we'll take our first step and just be like, okay, we're gonna go out and build confidence. This is like brain science stuff here. You simply have to 
to decide to be more confident. How many people have you heard up on this stage or from yesterday, John asked and whatnot, that's all about what you think? Well, confidence is the same thing. We have to just choose it. Every morning when you wake up and put those feet on the ground, you're gonna start saying, I can be more confident. No person, no event, nothing in your life can rob you of that unless you willingly let them come in. Instead, you will just start setting the triggers. What happens is we try to complicate it. We try to be like, I gotta figure out all these metaphysical things and whatnot. No, it's just setting an intention. It's setting the intention to do that. Let me give you an example. I was working with one of our coaches in one of our high performance coaching sessions that we do on our team. And she was going through something, she's just like, you know what, every time I look at like my bank account, I start to feel like I'm not where I'm supposed to be. And I think my sister's way more successful than I am. And I remember my dad always telling me, why can't you be more like your sister? And I was like, time out. I was like, is your dad like just off the Zoom camera that I can't see right now? She's like, no, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, is he there right now telling you this, that you're not good enough, you're not, like, your sister's like, no, no, he used to tell me that in the past. And I'm like, so it's not happening now. She's like, no. So you choose to go pull that memory, that feeling, that thought, and bring it in here to today? Why? Do you enjoy that? She's like, no. And I'm like, so, like, you have just trained that thought pattern how about we train a new thought pattern? And let's put some things in place that she can do for it. So I'm like, what's the thought that you want to be more confident? Cool. Here's what I want you to do to start putting a training in place. All that you can do this with her, all I had her do was bust out their phones. You got your phones? So you got your phones, if you're on Facebook, shut it down, bust it, I know you're on Facebook. Now, go to your calendar. 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Type in, be more confident. Set the alert to go off. Set it to repeat every day from now on. So every morning when you get up, I don't care if hell in a handbasket went in the morning, but at 9 a.m. that trigger's gonna go off and you're gonna be like, yeah, I'm supposed to be more confident. Now, let me direct my energy and my intentions towards that and start training the brain towards that new pattern. Because when you start setting that pattern, you have the courage to live into yourself. And when you have the integrity to live yourself, that always breeds an internal confidence that no one can take away from you. So just look at deciding and setting the triggers that you need, and that's something you can work with your coaches. Because a lot of them go through the, like, the more littler fears, ah, I'm not gonna go out there and do that until I'm more confident, I'm not gonna go out and invite and prospects more confident. You have to help them start choosing it more and putting it into their calendar, cool? Our next step is simply understanding that, okay, so we're gonna choose to set the intention to be more confident, if we aim it at something, it's going to be more meaningful. Because, I know, I, I, I've been listening to a lot of stories going around about like leaders that have been in the business five, six, seven years, and they're now like, I mean, I've got all the time freedom, I've got all the financial freedom, but I'm still a little like now, like, where am I going with this? I'm, I'm tired. I'm like, it's not the same energy it was before. Well. What's that purpose bigger than the time freedom, bigger than the financial freedom? Because those things, one day you're gonna achieve those goals and they're gone. And instead, if you have that purpose, that's something higher, that why, that's something more meaningful, that's something worth fighting for, that will be your North Star. And that can't be taken away. That North Star will lead you towards it because anytime somebody comes to hack at your confidence, anytime somebody does something to you, you're gonna be like, no, that's cool. That's all right, that doesn't change because I'm aiming at that. I like to teach it to our team, have your commandments. Now I'm not religious, but I've studied all the major religions in my own search for purpose to just be like, what is the common thread between the greatest leaders, the greatest religions out there where they all have something that they can give to the people that's higher than themselves. When the times get tough, they're living to something bigger. Like I've shared my team, I'm like, my two is I have the cure for obesity in my hand and I got the cure for being broke in my hand. Those are my two commandments. Anything that aligns with those, I march forth. You try to dent me from those, it doesn't matter because I'm living into that. And that commitment and that conviction, that's what keeps you focused even in the dark because that purpose is your beacon. 
But so many people just are like waiting, like metaphysically, that purpose will come to me one day. It's not coming that way. The piano of purpose will not fall on your head when you walk outside. It won't be in a little basket in the morning when you go out. You gotta choose it. That's why it always goes back to choice, intention. It doesn't have to be complicated, especially when we're trying to work with our younger coaches that might not yet have done the level of work that you guys have all done on your personal development. Break it down for them and be like, hey, what are some of the, the roles that you have in your life? Mom, team builder, spouse. And be like, what's the purpose you have with that? Well, my purpose as a mom would be to make sure that I can raise the best family and give my kids every dream that they never wanted. Cool, there's a piece of your purpose. What about as a team builder, team leader? Because then when something happens, you can challenge them and yourselves to be like, oh, um, you were fighting for that purpose to give your kid every dream possible. Did that go away? Did that go away just because somebody said something bad about you on Facebook or somebody said no to a challenge pack and now you're all dented? Or did you have your North Star? Amen. A little exercise you can take back for yourselves. Help them with those roles. Give them the purpose. Help them to find that purpose. You gotta look like almost tapest, tapestry of purpose. Cool? From there, you wanna start being like, okay, I've got to be able to keep this thing going because where does lack of confidence come from? Besides not knowing why I do something, it comes from the fact of like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know what to do. It was kind of like when I was up on that stage, I was like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know what to do. So I didn't have much confidence in it. But then when I decided that this was an important platform to go out and get my message out there, I was like, I gotta do the work to earn the skills to know how to do this so I don't look like a marching soldier up on a stage again. So that made my agenda the skills. I was like, start taking courses on speaking. Start taking courses on moving on stage. And I went and invested in a world's greatest speaker, and Paul Eason, and course, and all these just different things, because I'm like, that skill mattered for me to get up here and not feel like a disaster again because I want to chase down that purpose of making sure that we're doing something about obesity, we're doing something about people being living broke, and I want to be more confident about it, so I'm going to invest in the skills. So many people just go out there and do random personal development. They're just picking and choosing that stuff. I'm like, is that part of a skill that you need in order to get this done? People come to me, hey, I want to learn how to blog, and I think it's important what I should do. I'm like, okay, so is that on your agenda? Be a blogger. Cool. Have you read a book on it? Have you taken a course on it? Have you done it? No. Oh, that's your personal development. Aim at that because it's what's relevant for you to get there. And get past the whole, I'm going to put it out there when it's perfect. Because that perfection never comes until you actually begin doing. So I'm like, you know what? Here's what I want you to do. Take more imperfect but disciplined action. So you want to blog? Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you blog. It doesn't matter if anybody reads it, you're gonna put it out there. Melanie Mitro put out, I don't even remember, 365 some odd blogs before somebody read one. Look where she is now. Imperfect, disciplined action at work. Role model that work ethic, but help your coaches or yourself. Be like, I wanna start shooting video because video is an important platform. Guys, I, I don't wanna do social media that way, I wanna do video. Well, put video study on your agenda and go. Get after it because then as your confidence builds, your confidence builds. And then you're in that classic confidence confidence loop that psychologist Tony Robbins and all that talk. It's already been studied. You just gotta simply go out and start doing it intentionally. And that performance, when you get up there, and winning in the things that you want to do in your business to build on the practice field, the performance is always in the practice. Are you practicing enough to win? the event. When you start getting that skill going, and you start taking more action, and more action starts to deliver more results, and your confidence keeps on building, you go and invest in deeper and bigger skills, you go keep on taking more action, you keep on going and taking more action, you start to get bigger results, and that's where momentum is waiting for you. And momentum builds massive confidence because everything starts clicking, everything starts going right, so you want to be, be like, now that I got momentum going, I got to make sure that nobody takes momentum away. Because momentum stealers will stop you dead in your tracks. And there's three in particular that I want you to watch out for. 
You got what I call the confidence hackers. Those are the doubters and the naysayers and the worriers. I don't know if you should be doing that. Can you do that? Should you be doing that? And it's all those voices of people coming at you that can start to just trip away at your confidence. Where instead, I teach this thing, and I mean, you heard Michael Neiman say it right there. It was perspective. You just gotta be able to gain perspective. With confidence hackers, I want you to remember this one line, this one question, anytime somebody comes to hack at your confidence. Who are you to be giving me advice? And this is what I learned from that, though, because I'm like, if the person has the same values, has the same desires to achieve the income, the financial freedom, the time freedom, the family, the relationship, the kids, whatever your things are that you value in life, if that person has those things, they've achieved those results, their advice, you should give it weight. If not, why should you be giving it weight? I have two sisters. One's a hacker and one's a lifter. The hacker has been divorced multiple times, is in a job that she's been in for 30 years that she absolutely hates, but just does because it's a job. Um, the hates everything to do with going out, having fun. I mean, at a wedding, I mean, there's like a half a smile in one picture that we're just like, you just don't have fun in life. So we have no values the same. So whenever she has something to say about my life, I'm just like, who are you to be giving me advice? It doesn't matter. You're a good sister. Cool. We're done. My other sister's a lifter. She's got an amazing family, amazing kids, amazing job. She loves enjoying life and traveling and all the things that I pursue. So when she gives advice, I give it weight. When you can just separate that, you're not gonna get caught in the minutia of somebody said this on Facebook, somebody said that. They're probably nowhere near where you guys are as leaders. So just gain that perspective and you're gonna let that slide away. And you're not gonna get people hacking at your confidence. Second thing is the fact that adversity and challenge is gonna come. It's gonna happen. Coaches are gonna quit on you. Business is gonna change. Disease, death, and families, that's all coming. But does that derail you? Does that make you put everything on hold? Does that curl you into a ball? Or do you instead embrace it, gain perspective on it, and be like, adversity is a workout for the soul, baby. Let's just embrace this thing and march on. Maybe, maybe I gotta get focused on some other skills. Maybe I gotta make sure I'm really aiming at that purpose. And just ask yourself, am I the only person that this has ever happened to? There's perspective, as if we're the only person. My father deals with Alzheimer's, and it causes our family a lot of just like, what are we doing? But I'm like, hey, I can be there for as much as I can, but I can't stop the mission that I'm on, because that's the legacy I have to leave behind in my life. And what I'm doing, that allows us to have the perspective of what we need to do. The third one is watching for people that unplug from the environment. When you unplug from community, it's a sure guaranteed thing that you will go off the backside, your skills will get rusty, your energy is going to go down, you're going to start getting disconnected from your purpose, and the intentions are going to start slipping away. When you stay connected to the community, and you stay connected to your people, you've seen it like it happening to your coaches, whenever they disconnect, had a coach disconnect for like 10 months, Thousand bucks for the income just reversed the other way. Starting to plug back in finally for a month, 200 bucks back. And I'm like, can you put that together one more month? And let's see if we can claw back another 200. And I'm like, but it better be worth something. This better be something to you, otherwise you're just gonna go disconnect again. Is this the time that it's finally worth something for you? And that's why we put them right into these little frameworks of how we can plug them in there. And if you can take that framework and go teach it to your coaches. You've got a little system that you can use with them. Because we learned from Aristotle that you are what you repeatedly do. Excellence is a habit. I say you are what you repeatedly do and teach. Because I remember when I decided to bring on high performance coaching, I was just like, okay, I've already gotten this framework down. So it's like, okay, I'm investing in this skill because this is an attention I want to set. I know this is gonna help me march down my purpose I got clarity on that. This skill set, I need to practice it. If the performance of it's in the practice, I gotta practice it every day. So instead I created a 12 week training for our team. I run it once a quarter. And I'm like, I'm in the environment of it every day because I must demand that of myself. 
in order to freaking go change the lives that I want to do. Do that with any practice that you guys have in your personal development, and this confidence, and high performance, whatever the things that you're investing in, because it's not just about the challenges, it's not just about the recruiting and the network, it's about you guys weaving this stuff into your trainings so you don't leave this stuff to chance, but you make sure that this language is what permeates your team, because before we walk outside these doors, we have to say to ourselves, we will be the confident leaders. And then you gotta do what you gotta do because you gotta stay away from the people that are hacking at your confidence. You gotta be willing to invest in the skills that you have to go out there and put because there is something that matters out there. There's something bigger than each one of us. There's something in your heart that is drawing you out there. Are you willing to do the work? And understand that confidence is not something you have. It is something that you generate and all along, it was inside you, and you created it.